Hi, my name is Siddharth. People call me Karadi because that's my last name. Unfortunately, I'm the founding member of this band called Zignama. We've been around for 18 years. We feel like dinosaurs, but we're still having fun. So, Scarfest is the name of our IP, the band. I mean, the band started this IP December 22nd, 2019. And uh, we decided to name it Scarfest because Scarfest is our first composition that we wrote together. And uh, I guess it took us one jam to complete the song. And the next day, we ended up playing it at one of the college competitions. And, you know, it was an instant hit. People went crazy. There was like a wall of death and whatnot. So we were like, okay, this song instigates the people. You know, it's for the people in that space. And hence, we decided, okay, let's call it Scarfest. One word, very easy to remember and very collective. So 2019 was the first edition. Uh, 2020, 2021, though obviously nothing because the pandemic. 2022, we did uh, something called as the Mumbai Metal Party that had like a couple of 25 artists in an all-star collaboration. Then we had Scepter, we had Corner Cafe Chronicles and then um, even we were supposed to play a couple of songs at the end. But you know, we, we realized that it was 120 and we got to play one song. But even that was a lot of fun. 2023, uh, we did two editions uh, under the brand Scarfest. It was called as Fresh Blood. So Fresh Blood uh, used to happen way back at uh, B69 where we used to hunt for all these young bands who were looking for the debut shows or who have played only one or two shows so that, uh, you know, we can club them all together and, you know, create another small little ecosystem so that they start working together. Mm. Because that's how we started working together with bands back then. But these are all just small, small layers and surfaces that, you know, people have to discover while they are at it. And uh, we thought, you know, why not initiate that? So we did two editions of Fresh Blood. One was in Bombay. The other one was in Pune. And that happened to be uh, Dutch Slit's uh, album launch as well. So like, you know, having two, three young bands and one senior band definitely bring in the right balance. December 2023, we, we hosted the Wacken Metal Party. For, uh, in which, you know, cast from Pune, they won the Mumbai leg, the Bangalore leg, and now they're going to walk in Germany. Wacken Open Air is like the mecca of Heavy metal festivals, one of the world's biggest metal festival, 90,000 to 1 lakh fans. Think of a band that is godlike and they are performing there. Think of Sepal Dora, Maiden, Rapstein, Lava Board, Meshuk, everyone's played there. Yes, so we basically participated in Wacken Metal Battle somewhere by 2012, exactly 12 years ago. So we won the Mumbai and uh, the National Legs, we went to Germany. We felt that it's a very important step in any band's life. So we have done a cup, I think, four editions. So we try and make sure that, you know, you host Scarface on December 22nd. After that is just Christmas and New Year vibe. So I don't know, probably I'm the one who's a sentimental fool, you know, who says, like, why did pick Karanachi? If you're asking me, what is my vision? What is our vision? Yes, we would like to host more bands, probably make it into an open air affair. Then slowly looking at this becoming into a two day gig probably having enough budgets to get at least one or two international bands, if not the metal mammoths, but some popular band, you know, who don't mind coming at a reasonable cost and, you know, just making the entire metal fraternity look a lot more stronger because it's always like a cycle. There always comes a phase, you know, where everything is a trend and, you know, it just, it holds its value and then it goes away. So, metal has been a part of everyone's life, which is that we have to reach out to them. So through Scarfest, you know, hopefully we are finding new audience, new people, new bands. So I think somewhere we are reaching out to people because things always don't come to you. You have to go to them at times. So initially it was just one, two of us. Now I can say that we are four, hoping to expand. So of course, ideation comes through the entire team now. Jimmy and myself have always been involved. Ivan has been with us since 2021. He's been taking care of all the artists and, you know, connecting with them, shortlisting them, taking care of them. Basically, the show running. Ekta has been involved with the aesthetic look and feel designs. She's been handling social media for the past two, three years. That's been of great help to us. We've had Varun Patil handle Sound for Fresh Blood for Mumbai Pune. This time we had uh, Cliffy. But the other two editions of Scarface was purely handled by Akash because he's been with us on board for, I don't know how many years, almost two decades now. 
so when he's on console like i personally am absolutely stress free because you know he makes everyone sound great so that's the whole agenda of scatters like you know make all the bands sound good it's not about one individual band so we found great people who work collectively with that mindset and you know we give that kind of respect and approach and the time to all the bands as i mentioned like you know we have been around for 18 years so i would say we are excellent with our uh, network we have a lot of good people around us you know who are willing to support us with uh, other things it social has been the biggest support for us you know who have been uh, he- like you no know, being selfless and giving us their venue when you permissions lights everything come at a high cost in bombay so all of these basic things are eliminated so it gives us more advantage to spend on production like you know you have a team a social media team for example who we'll spend 3 months making creatives every day and pushing the content out that is why we always see a packed house if you're not working for 3 months continuously for an event or 2 months minimum it just fizzles out next comes basic production you know getting an led ball getting some visuals designed extra volunteers there are fending there are so many miscellaneous costs we completely depend on the lineup and the gate sales the first edition had sponsors but you know to be very transparent like they didn't give us like a big amount not that i was expecting like you know a lakh two lakh three lakh like it was impossible because if you think from a brand's perspective even they have their deliverables and you have to respect that when you has their own set of charities and deliverables you have to respect that so getting an alcohol sponsor on board it's nullified because the venue has its own arrangements and you know you can't trouble them with your uh, unnecessary demands i'm really grateful that we had nagin hot sauce in the first edition then uh, a friend of mine who runs a company called as nat they manufacture t-shirts so even they were a sponsor on board then even bajao has been uh, they've been instrumental with their marketing and gear support in fact you know when you plug in all these small small things together you know every drop tops so that took care of the production cost so mm-hmm. then you know whatever money we were raising we could pay off the bands whatever we were earning so it it helped us to start the show deck fully you know playing a gig becomes a lot more enjoyable i can say that the first edition had about 550 plus entries the place was packed it was sweaty but that is how metal gigs are mumbai metal mandal was even bigger because a you have that 25 artist all star lineup you know we picked up sid puto from zero to blue with timir and you know everyone from all the bands from a decade ago to the current it was fun so plus they are individual fan following it isn't it again that time we had some 550 plus entries i'm not even telling how many guests we set to because even they occupy space but what i'm extremely proud of is that scarf has set up brand identity for the bands and for people uh, where when we hosted fresh blood there were three to four unknown bands or semi popular bands they must have played a couple of shows fresh blood had about 406 paid entries i'm really happy with that because unknown bands pulling in that much crowd plus of course the team involved working hard it was great 17 december that was when deep purple was playing in bangalore to our crowd bifurcation mode yeah it's okay but 280 odd people for a competition and you know when people step out of their house out of their comfort zone to pay and check out a competing band you know that says something so yeah like you know when we were playing walk in opener in 2012 i mean we just were there with the mindset that at freak you know we're in front of x thousand people like you know probably 8 9000 people and they were there only to check out the 40 to 50 competing bands from all over the world and they've paid a hefty amount to come and see what i mean they had the option of being somewhere else at a bigger stage watching your demo bogi or your opet or your machine head but they chose to come and see all these competing bands coming from mexico japan netherlands wherever across the world and i'm like wow this is so cool like you know people actually want to discover new music new talent you know they know a famous band big bands are always in the news let's find something else so somewhere that stayed with us especially me and then uh, in 2019 7 years down and we like you know why don't we do this why don't we do that like let's support young talent and somewhere you know i feel that you know when amit segal was around you know he started this great initiative of 
the indo cultural exchange thing with the norwegian embassy uh, so inferno uh, metal festival that happens in oslo so we played that in 2013 but unfortunately amit had passed by then but before that he managed to send the demonic resurrection undai bhayanak mod scry and he also managed to get a couple of artists from norway and sweden and you know they performed at great indian rock so there is great healthy exchange of music and culture happening and it's so good like you know when the government and embassy is taking care of the art art department and that is the one time you know you're not worrying about budgets so you know if we can somewhere in the future create that sort of buffer for the young talent you know that hope will be a little stronger i think that was there during our time we played so many college competition we used to get cash prize so we would pump that into album and tours and what not making t-shirts that is missing right now you know even the colleges are not supporting everyone wants to just make money and they'll just make the students work relentlessly and take away all the budgets it's it's very sad so i mean uh, we are constantly brainstorming both the musicians both moody hote hain to i am one of them the other boys are so when we are involved we start thinking early but i think the real execution starts happening only 3 4 months prior the venue and permission everything is taken care of but if you the day we have the budgets and sponsors to do an open air gig i think we'll have to start one year prior or at least 9 8 to 9 months prior because handling all the legal paperwork takes a while and i mean everything is pretty simple considering you know we have done this so many times in the past we just know what are they expecting what kind of email what is the minimum maximum worry that you can ask for and you know everything has a threshold so you know when you're playing within that much or within the limit uh, it's more or less on autopilot right now sponsors do not really understand or connect with metal and they they won't because this is india and you can't have unrealistic expectations this is a bollywood gig then you know you would have sponsors running behind us either aise nahi hota you know you have to constantly convince them that you know we understand your brand vision and make sure that it resonates in our music so we are also normal human beings just because we have long hair and you know we listen to music that the brands don't understand doesn't mean we are not consumers in fact we consume everything more than anyone just because we choose to dress up and look a specific way you know people have that pre made notion or template ki ha he can't afford it even even i was one of them until 2019 i had a metal dream when you saw all these kids dressed up like god and with makeup and i'm like great chalo theek hai you know people are having fun and they're going one extra mile to prepare themselves for a metal gig as an audience they have the spending capacity man and like we still think like ki bhai log bahar quarter mile ke andar aayega show ke liye no was people are coming and splurge find it secondary bucks for a beer yes they have fantastic happy hours one plus one free but no one is drinking but was there any more they are drinking corona they are drinking ho garden and all those beers are for 7 to 800 rupees it's more exclusive than the ticket so we know that people are spending three times the amount on fnb so the spending culture has changed consumption culture also has changed so yeah just like how heavy metal music is a lifestyle it's not that you choose heavy metal music it becomes an integral part of your life and you start associating with everything around it so which is why people decide to consume products that will reflect that side of theirs and they are extremely comfortable in that community they can be themselves so say for example if beardo looks at us suddenly there are well groom metal heads you know with nice shaped beard and you know well maintained like royal enfield like every metal head has an enfield bike and they are not cheap anymore man they are expensive everybody has an iphone i don't know how they can afford the airpods and everything man matlab and plus the merch prices have gone up like you know bands are selling merch for like 1000 1200 and we see at least 60% of the audience wearing indian band merch so they are the ones who are the uh, tiny but most effective pillars around the community so yes matter of perspective and being a little brave so usually it's the venue who's helping us save money by just being generous so extremely grateful and thankful to anti social and the audience you know who constantly support the gig but once the sponsors come on board it's going to be a much better version so the experience will enhance for the audience so i would say the artists were the sponsors because they graced the stage with their 
peasants and you know they decided to play show for fun so that is how the community works like you know they have been playing a lot of commercial gig bollywood gig composing music this that so they are like you know yaar we started as metal musicians thoda kuch josh chahiye yaar like so so when this happened they like bajaya bhai panch gana ka das gana bajaya so we had a lot of people who were extremely happy to jump on and you know put up a slamming gig we are always on the hunt for a band that is looking for a debut or a first second gig of course they understand that you know they are working to grow an audience so we are more than happy to risk everything from our end and we give them a production that no other small gigs or venues will give them secondly mid size senior bands we promise them an extra amount of fee that we know that okay this is risk free this is what we can afford if you are okay to help us out and accept this fee like you know we are more than happy to have you if it's against the principle then you know we don't force them but again based on our network and our goodwill like everyone has been extremely generous and you know been very accommodating because i see that they also see that this is heading somewhere profitable to yaar matlab kya hi batai but uh, yes somehow we are able to clear our debts without any hesitation and you know the moment you are you have paid off all your artists and your crew like that is a sense of satisfaction that is at this moment i would call that as a profit because a lot of audience are showing up for the gig and uh, you know whenever we have any sort of surplus we put it back into the production of the gig it's like the typical business plan first five to six years you have to keep rotating the cash you know you can't take anything back home and thus 15 rupees or what kya hi kar lenge hum log it's it's a very nominal amount so might as well spend extra on getting a good engineer you know who do sound for all the bands and everyone sounds the same rather than allowing the board to exchange multiple hands get a lights guy and tell him okay this is a budget do lights and visual for him employ everyone share everyone whoever is free and make the show memorable one right now to we are in the midst of finishing the release plan for Zigdemar's EP there are a lot of things lined up you know considering i run a guitar school and you know i also consult an examination board handling a release then working with the team on scarfer as thing you know having 50 plus students a little too much at the moment right now so this year i have been a little what do you say uh, caught up so one day at a time i think that confidence comes from the band that i play for and more importantly the amount of time you have given to the band and the, the kind of support and love we get from people so it's it's purely that like you know we know that whenever we announce anything people always show up in numbers and you know it's absolute chaos in the great sense and and we love it we love it uh being a part of college competition then getting co-headlining slots and headlining slots understanding what people have managed to put together to host us on that stage so we were just not there to play the show like you know we were observing and like you know asking all the right question i don't know why but also during my days with bajao there used to be a venue called as b69 so i should put the responsibility on us after like first couple of weeks like you're a musician you have friends who have who are playing in bands put a show together and do this twice a week to size a week you know we have an x amount of rent to pay so it's your responsibility to collect that rent how you do it i don't care just do it so somewhere it was amazing to be thrown in that end of the well and you know somehow you just managed to stay afloat and do whatever so that experience to traveling abroad seeing how the european markets work and what is the culture there and what is the culture here understanding the difference understanding the barrier and what the audience want i mean it's it's a lesson that you learn every day like the more you do this the more you get an idea yeah i mean we did the uh, party la 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 in 2016 which was a blast then we did one more edition in 2017 the, the mantra was diy or die so basically do it yourself or like you know again no sponsors you work hard for like an entire month promoting the show and you see a audience i mean when you pack with audience so then i realized okay like i know what my capabilities are and i know what if these couple of people uh, handle xyz department and you know i can do my thing and somehow like you know all of that started like you know culminating really well and we just kept going at it like you know then it became a compulsion like oh we didn't do anything this year we have to do something 
yes passion if there was no passion people wouldn't have agreed for like you know a nominal amount because they're all industry experts and they have been they have been working for 10 plus years and you know they have found their niche they found their uh, hold in the market so they get paid what they ask but you know if the dates are free and if they are happy to see the lineup so they sometimes you know even sacrifice their work that day oh. when you see more people and newer faces every edition it means you are reaching out to a wider audience they were curious they showed up they wanted to see what is happening and somehow even they were dressed like the other metalheads to like you know feel comfortable and be a part of the community so like the message was clear so if the message is clear and you know if people want to test how it works for them and you know heavy metal community is always been very welcome and if you see the mosh pits if someone falls people pick them up like they don't want you to get crushed that's how i see the audience like you know if they like a yearly property or an event and they see okay more bands young bands new bands mid size bands are being added and the experience somewhat is getting better i think that's very motivating and you know it's always the people who showing up for the gigs will end up motivating any promo not just me any promo so 90% to bombay mein december 22nd ko we will manage to do something besides that yes we want to do fresh blood and get more young bands from other cities and see how we can make that feasible for them and for us uh this time we want to enter into the instrumental prog rock space and also get some alternative rock bands and start something new what is it the existing audience is willing to come for the same gigs with a different lineup and support them as well because end of the day everyone is putting in the equal amount of hard work being a musician is not easy and it's not cheap either there comes a lot of sacrifice and the best we can do is show up for a gig and that's how musicians go back home happy Take it! Go!